Let's see if we can simplify this expression. And like always, pause the video and, and have a go at it. Now this one is interesting because it involves two variables, but it's, it's really the same ideas that we've done when we factored things with one variable. So for example, up here in the numerator, well I never like having a non-1 coefficient on the second degree term here. I mean sometimes you have to. Uh, but for it looks like every term here is divisible by 5, so let's factor out a 5 first. So the numerator I can rewrite as 5 times 5 times, you factor out a 5 here, you get x squared. Factor out a 5 here, you get plus 4. Actually, I'm going to rewrite it as 4yx, and you'll see in a second why I'm doing that. Actually, I'll tell you why. <laughs> I'll tell you why I'm doing that right now, why I'm writing the y there, is that this way it seems to, it, it, it seems to hit your, the pattern of how we're used to seeing quadratics. So let's see, so you have x squared plus 4yx. You can view the 4y as a coefficient on the first degree in x term, on the x term right over there, plus 4y squared. And it's going to be over, over. Now the denominator here, can we factor this out? Well, let's just think about it. Do we know two, two numbers, or I guess what we would say, do we know two expressions that would that when you multiply them, you get negative 6y squared, and then when you add them, you get negative xy. So, or sorry, when you add them, you get negative y. That's actually why I liked writing it like this. So actually, let me rewrite this. This is the same thing as negative yx. And so you can view the coefficient here as negative y. And so we need to think of two numbers, so or two expressions, a times b, that is equal to negative 6y squared. And when I add them, a plus b, I get that is equal to negative y. And so you can imagine both of them are going to be expressions, a and b are going to be expressions that involve y. And so let's see, if, you, if this was just a negative 1, and if this was just a negative 6, well we would do, we would do negative 3 and positive 2. And let's see, if we did negative 3y and positive 2y, that indeed is going to be equal to negative 6y squared. And negative 3y plus 2y does indeed equal negative y. So that's our a and b right over there. And if it seems a little mysterious, how did Sal just all of a sudden get negative 2y or negative 3y and positive 2y? Let me write a, an analogous quadratic here that only has one variable. If I were to write x squared minus x minus 6, and I were to ask you to factor that out, you say, oh, okay. Well, this is going, I have negative 2, I have negative 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, and if I add them, well, that's going to be negative 1. So you'd say, well, that's going to be, that's going to be x minus 3 times x plus 2. And so the only difference between this and that is instead of having just a negative 1 here, you have a negative 1 y. Instead of having just a negative 6 here, you have a negative 6 y squared. And so you could just think of this, instead of just negative 3 and positive 2, negative 3y and positive 2y. Hopefully that makes sense. And if it doesn't, I encourage you to, to kind of play around with this, multiply these out a little bit, get a little bit of more, more familiar with this. But once we, now that we know that it can be factored like this, let's rewrite this. This is going to be x minus 3y times x plus 2y. And nothing seems to simplify out just yet, but it looks like what we have in magenta here could be simplified further. And we're gonna do a very similar exercise to what we did just now. What two expressions, if I multiply them, I get 4y squared, and if I add them, I get 4y. It looks like 2y would do the trick. So it seems like we can rewrite the numerator. This is going to be, so let me draw a little line here to make it clear that this is, this is going to be equal to 5 times x plus 2y times, I could say just x plus 2y squared, or I could just say x plus 2y times x plus 2y. Once again, 2y times 2y is 4y squared. 2y plus 2y is 4y. And so, and that's all going to be over. That is all going to be over x minus 3y, x minus 3y times x plus 2y.
And so now I have a common factor, x plus 2y, in both the numerator and the denominator. So I can candle x plus 2y divided by x plus 2y. Well, that's just going to be 1 if we assume that x plus 2y does not equal 0. And that's actually an important constraint. Because once we cancel this out, you, you lose that information. And if you want this to be algebraically equivalent, we could say that x plus 2y cannot be equal to 0. Or another way you could say it is that x cannot be equal to cannot be equal to negative 2y. I just subtracted 2y from both sides there. And so what you're left with, and we can redistribute this 5 if we want to write it out in an expanded form, we could rewrite it as the numerator would be 5x, let me write it over here, 5x plus 10y, and the denominator is x minus 3y. But once again, if we wanted to be algebraically equivalent, we would have to say x cannot be equal to x cannot be equal to negative 2y. And now this is algebraically equivalent to what we had up here. And you can argue that it's a little bit simpler.